the Solar 3.0 technology that will change the world. The sun, from our limited perspective, is an infinite and renewable energy source. It's like a giant fusion reactor millions of miles away, lighting up the Earth and providing as much energy in a single day as the entire human civilization uses in a single year. So why aren't we making more use of such a boundless source to solve all of our energy-related problems? In today's video, I'll show you how. But before that, be sure to like this video and let us know your thoughts on this matter in the comment section below. If you're new here, consider subscribing to the channel for more future tech contents. Understanding the Technology Photovoltaic and concentrating solar thermal power are the two primary categories of solar energy technologies. Nevertheless, each one comes with its own set of advantages and disadvantages. Currently, just 2% of the world's electricity comes from solar power, and 90% of that is generated by photovoltaic systems. However, photovoltaic systems are the most extensively deployed solar electric technology in the world since they are far more affordable. Crystalline silicon-based photovoltaic systems are the most dominant material technology among those now silicon is an excellent material found abundantly in Earth with tons of properties that have benefited humanity over the years. Researchers have no choice but to limit its use on a large scale because the majority of its drawbacks are related to efficiency, manufacturing complexity, and pollution. But what if I told you there's a material so efficient that it has the potential to replace all silicon-based photovoltaic systems in a few years. A lightweight material that's relatively much simpler to produce at a substantially cheaper cost. A solution that can be used to make a photovoltaic system that's so thin that light can pass through it's called Solar 3.0 technology. A pair of skies and quick solar systems that pioneered Paris Kit solar system is a material used. How it works in order to have understanding of how this revolutionary solar system technology functions, let's first take a look at what CEO of Swift Solar, one of the most prominent teams working on a pair of Skype solar technology, has to say about it. Jeannie is the CEO of Swift Solar, which is one of the most prominent teams working on a pair of Skype solar technology. He says that this new kind of thin film technology is something that you've probably heard for a long time. That different kinds of thin films have come and gone over the years. Pair of Skype is a new type of semiconductor material that absorbs light really effectively and also transport charge. So it just turns out to be a very efficient material for solar cells. The idea is to use pair of Skype to develop thin film cells in a way that maximizes energy utility and minimizes wastage. In contrast to crystalline silicon-based photovoltaic systems that are fabricated in semiconducting wafers, these thin film cells absorb light really effectively and also transport charge, so they just turn. Today, multiple other materials have been used over the years to make thin film cells including amorphous silicon and cadmium telluride. However, now with the introduction of pair of skites, those researchers have shifted their focus to this leading contender. So what exactly makes a pair of skites so useful? Anyway, why are scientists hopeful about solar panels with a hundred times the power to weight performance compared to the conventional silicon panels' effectiveness of per square centimeter? It wasn't the discovery of Paris Kit itself that revolutionized solar technology. Rather, it was when scientists realized that they could create a wide range of artificial pair of sky crystals. In accordance with the formula ABX ray, it is possible to use it as a pair of sky, in which the A and the ions are two positively charged ions arranged alongside the X ion which is negatively charged ion. Now, without getting too technical, 
This basic structure of pyrazite crystal can be replicated using a wide variety of elements and minerals that would share the same conductive properties. Because of this, it wasn't the discovery of Paris kit itself that revolutionized. Since the thin films of these crystals are likewise multilayered, which result in them being good semiconductors. You should know the basic structure of a pair of skite solar cells now that you have this information. The question that needs to be answered is exactly how effective are these two skite cells? Are they really the holy grail of solar technology as scientists have deemed them to be? And if so, why aren't we manufacturing them on a larger scale and harnessing the sun's energy to their full potential to understand why pair of skites hold a fundamental advantage over silicon solar cells that we're used to seeing. Let's get into a bit of more detail about the mechanism that goes into the process of photovoltaic cells converting sunlight into electricity. PV cells are limited in their capacity and can only absorb a restricted portion of the solar spec, which is primarily dependent on the semiconductor material. A wide spectrum of photons of energy that can be absorbed by the semiconductor material will inevitably go to waste. These photons are typically the ones with the energies that are less than the band gap of the semiconductor material, which you can think of as the band G. The disadvantages of PV cells, although remarkable since junction solar systems are limited in their capacity and can only hold this level of efficiency. It is particularly interesting because it took more than 20 years of research and silicon-based solar cells to reach the kind of efficiency that perovskite solar systems reached in a mere two years. But that is not where the magic ends along. With the efficient performance, pair of skites have the added advantage of being easy to manufacture as well as this thin film can be manufactured by men by first developing a solar ring and gradually heating the liquid to a higher temperature than it was originally at the beginning of the process. These cells can be manufactured utilizing a variety of industrial techniques, such as spin, coating, screen printing, electrode positioning printing, or simply by printing the material on a sheet using an inkjet printer. Researchers have just lately begun integrating regular silicon solar cells with pairs of skite solar cells. Nanotexture designs or surfaces covered with nano-sized structures can further improve with better fabrication techniques, limitations of periscutes, so if periscute solar system are so incredible, what's preventing their mass production and integration into all of our everyday lives? It's important to keep in mind that researchers don't play favorites, that new technologies are frequently judged on their ability to solve specific problems. Furthermore, the material is highly poisonous in its natural state necessitating extra vigilance and preventative steps on the part of experts. Parasite solar system cell development is still in need of techniques that will allow them to be mass-produced. Risk-free productions. In spite of this, more people are still confident that pure of sites will be increasingly used for commercial purposes in the near future. That the possibility of integrated solar panels and trucks buses and cars is not a far-fetched. In fact, we might get to see buildings or even skyscrapers covered in transparent photovoltaic glass windows to generate electricity. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you're interested in learning more about everything new in the world of science and technology, check out the other videos in the channel. What do you think about the future of this incredible Solar 3.0 technology? Let me know in the comments section below. I want to thank you all for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.